Director's Reflections for February 12th of 2023. Peña Gomez and I in the hideout. His life was a stake, and this time it seemed more likely that he might lose it. The government of President Joaquin Balaguer had mounted an intense operation to capture him along with his party leader, Juan Bosch. They were accused of being the political leaders of the guerrilla insurrection of Colonel Francisco Camaño de Ño in February of 1973, 50 years ago. Both had to rush into hiding while the government imposed a state of emergency with troops and tanks on the streets to track them down. In the midst of this state of affairs, it was difficult for the press to get in touch with them. The only way Bush had to counteract the persecution was through some manuscripts that he sent me to the Listín Diario office with an emissary. But Peña Gómez remained mute and instead of writing manuscripts, he agreed to speak to me personally in the least imagined hiding place for the security forces who were looking for him like bloodhounds. I got to him because a respectable society couple, a friend of mine who was hiding him in his residence, invited me to have a coffee without having a clue that it was the pretext for us to meet and interview him. As soon as I entered the mansion, Dr. Caonabo Fernandez Naranjo and his wife, Mrs. Nilda Socias de Fernandez, told me in a low voice, come, come up with us to show you something. We entered the attic of his residence, located a few meters from Balaguer's and the Presidential Security Headquarters, and there was nothing more and nothing less than one of the men most persecuted by the government at that time. We greeted each other effusively, and Peña Gomez began to explain to me the arguments of his defense to reject any involvement with the landing of Camaño. He was not favored by the fact that 20 days before the landing, he announced that the machine guns will sound again in the streets of the capital as in 1965. Alluding to the year of the Constitutionalist Revolution in April, because this expression in the eyes of the government was proof of his connection to the conspiracy. That was not the only interview he gave me during his prolonged hiding. Thanks to logistics agreed upon with the Fernandez Socias family, I returned other times to take their statements. Being the only reporter who was allowed direct access in such a delicate circumstance, I never let it be seen in my notes that it was a face-to-face -face interview, but a statement sent to the newspaper as Professor Juan Bush frequently did with me, so as not to risk his life more than he was. For Listín Diario, voice over and translations by Indira Rodriguez.